and welcome back to the shop. Uh, today, I've been working on my little, uh, my new load bank. Uh, this load bank is, I think it's like the third or the fourth one I've built. But anyway, I wanted to go over a few things on this to try to help some other guys out that have been looking at building load banks and, uh, you know, asking questions about, you know, what should I do, how should I do it, and so forth. Okay, the first thing that I would suggest is go to Flea Bay or Cramazon or make very good buddy-buddy with somebody with a heating and air guy. But one way or another, get a hold of a pile of old heat strips. Now, I've got an assortment of flavors here. These are Nordine heat strips, and you'll notice that they are... Uh, very uniform in the way that they are. Their, their form factor, I think, is what you would call it. But this, this piece of stamped steel here is the same on about every Nordine set of heat strips that I've seen. Now, they've got different limit switches that are built into them and, and a few different things, but the hole that they require to, that they're going to go into is almost always the same. So these are Nordine heat strips. Uh, these are Carrier Bryant heat strips. These heat, this heat strip pack here came out of a York, I think. And there's also some other heat strips that I've added into this uh, frame or this plate. Uh, I think there may be a pack of train heat strips in there or who knows. Anyway, these are just kind of a bastard cat selection. But if you're going to build one of these, scrounge for Nordine heat strips because Nordine residential air handler heat strips are all basically going to look like this. Uh, if you can buy new old stock or discontinued stock or something like that of heat strips, uh, get like 20 kW strip packs and buy four or five 20 kW strip packs and kind of probably expect to pay... $120, $150 per 20 kW strip pack. So you do the math. Uh, so anyway, these are my fan leads. The fan in this, the fans are 110 volt. Uh, if anybody has uh, any questions about these fans, ask them in the comments down in the doobly-doo. Uh, I've got a really good lead on these fan motors. These are, uh, I think, 25 bucks a whack is what I gave for these, which is very inexpensive for what you're getting. These are like 400 or five, four or 500 CFM fans, which, I mean, these suckers really blow some air. And for 25 bucks, you can't go wrong. Uh, I've got a one of my suppliers, I think they misordered a pallet of these things and are trying to get rid of them. So anybody wants some fans, let me know. But these are just biscuit blower fans and here's the uh, there's the strips you can tell these strips are new these are used there's everything's in here uh, the sheet metal case is just 26 gauge sheet metal uh, nothing nothing especially fancy there I went to the motor shop and bought a piece of uh, linen reinforced phenolic resin and this is what i'm going to use you know this is my terminal block this is the inside and here's the the business side of things uh just standard plain old quarter inch terminals now i did the way i did these terminals the solid the, the center stud is brazed in this is a piece of three quarter by eight and the center stud was just a piece of all thread and i brazed it in and then ran a just a layer of brass on top of this three quarter by eighth flat stock so that this won't corrode. Uh, you can look at my boat trailer ground uh, video. I did the same thing here as I do there when I do boat trailer grounds. Just a little bit of brass plated on there with the torch, you know, when you're with brazen rod, and that won't ever corrode. Don't have to worry about it. 
just used some flathead quarter inch machine screws to, to bolt that bus bar into this. I wished I could have had a, a good place to get some maybe three quarter by quarter or something like that brass flat stock, but other than ordering, ordering it through McMaster car or something, there's just nowhere to find something like that here. Okay, this here is just a piece of 12 gauge wire. Just 12 gauge bare copper and I just came off of my bus bar here. And it just goes around the bus bar, comes off, goes through about an eighth of an inch hole. I got that in there, hammered it flat. Took it up this way, laid it over an anvil, hammered this side down flat. And you can't hardly see it. Where'd the test meter go? You can't hardly see, but there's a hole right there, right here by the end of the wire, which will kind of spring over out of the way. And there's just enough spring tension in that copper to, to make it spring over. Uh, but you can... You've got a place to set your your probe. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger than a, a probe tip. This is my old junky multimeter. This is not one that I use or trust, or this is just what stays out in the shop. But but this way you can you know stick your, your probes in there. And the way I'm setting this up, it's gonna be single phase. This will be the A leg to neutral. This will be the B leg to neutral. You know, we're going to call this one A, this one B, probably this one neutral. I hope I'm still in frame. A, B, neutral. Uh, so this way I can set a really bad, wild, unbalanced load on the generator. Just because I always wanted the load bank to where I could really set a bad, unbalanced load on the generator. And by doing that, I'm going to run 110 volts through each one of these heat strip packs. So this is going to be 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110. Uh, the, one of the first generations, iterations of this heat uh, load bank that I built, I made my heat strips, to, just ran 220 through them because they're 220 volt heat strips. And... I think a leaf or something had fell in there. I turned on the load bank. I was load banking from inside of a guy's house. Don't like doing that. Transfer switch was inside. I was load banking a Kohler, and they're kind of hard to get anything hooked to. They're hard to hook the damn wires to to start with. So I didn't want to screw with trying to hook up on, a, on the generator, so I usually hook up at the transfer switch. But anyway, I was inside the house. There was a leaf or some crud that had fell into the coils. I flipped her on. Of course, the coils are glowing red. The homeowner is watching that. He's kind of nervous about glowing red stuff inside of his house and said something silly. And about that time, that cotton-picking leaf got against that red coil and caught on fire, and there's little sparks coming out the end and oh my god it was a mess so since then i've set my load this will be the second one that i've set up for 110 volts going through the coils it just easier that way uh, and another thing is since they're not glowing red 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 if you whack this thing or it tips over or you trip over it or yank on the cord or whatever then there's you know, since the coil's not just screaming hot, it's probably not gonna bounce around and short out as bad. Uh, the, the far ends of these uh, uh, heat strip packs are bolted into the bottom of the uh, case. That way they don't flop and wiggle. Leads, I just went down to the feed store. This is just plain old welder lead, uh, number two. I've got a number four, I guess, center um, neutral wire. Uh, the terminals, you know, they're just quarter inch stud terminals that, that are homemade. 
uh, made out of a piece of 3 8 copper. No big deal there. Ooh, I just stuck that in the grease. My sheet metal break is right there, and I just stuck this in the, in the grease. Uh, the far end, everything is dip soldered. I may do a short little video here after a while about dip soldering. Uh, I, I just dip soldered all this in lead using, uh, I think, plumbing flux for flux on it. Uh, it's either plumbing flux or ruby fluid. But these are just dip soldered, same as everything else that's going into this. So anyway, that's kind of the grand tour. For switches, for my load bank, these are just 20 amp uh, Leviton light switches or 15 amp. Let me think here. Yeah, they're 20 amp single pole light switches. Uh, this is what I'm going to use on this because these are a lot cheaper than toggle switches. Uh, bigger, easier to wire. So there we go. Y'all have any questions, ask them in the comments. Everybody drive safe. Watch for deer.